Hare Krishna to all of you. A warm welcome to all the participants of uh, today's uh, wonderful seminar series we are starting. Demystifying Vedic Cosmology, A New Vision of Cosmos. And uh, myself, uh, Praveen Kumar, Prem Kishor Das. Uh, I'm coordinator for Institute for Science and Spirituality, Scone Delhi. And uh, I welcome you all for this wonderful seminar. Uh, our uh, series on uh, Vedic Cosmology. You know, there was uh, Vedic Cosmology. Uh, Dr. Uh, Mauricio uh, Garrido will be presenting uh, the Bhagavad Cosmology specifically. And, you know, the Bhagavatam is uh, the summum bonum of all the Vedic literature. Bhagavatam, Srimad Bhagavatam is uh, basically uh, uh, is the last Kriti of Srila Ved Vyasji. And uh, he has written Srimad Bhagavatam in his mature stage of spiritual understanding. So Srimad Bhagavatam is summum bonum of all the Vedic literature. Srimad Bhagavatam is, uh, no, is basically uh, known as the ripened fruit of all of the Vedic knowledge. So in Srimad Bhagavatam, this cosmology part comes under the fifth canto. And uh, Srimad Bhagavatam describes... 10, sub 10 subject matters. So under the 10 subjects of Srimad Bhagavatam, cosmology comes under the third subject, under the subheading Sthana. Okay. So Dr. Mauricio, uh, Mauricio Garrido, uh, basically uh, uh, his spiritual name is Murli Gopal. He, he was born in Bogota, Colombia in 1979. Gra graduated from the University at these D. Los and D. Columbia with BS in electrical engineering and in physics in 2003. He earned a black belt in Kobayashi Shorin Ryu Karate. He holds a PhD in physics from Ohio University. Has served an, served an internship at the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center, completed a postdoc at Columbia University, and has taught Sanskrit at the University of Florida. His research includes Puranic Cosmology, Vaishnav Philosophy, Quantum Field and Information Theory, General Relativity, Consciousness Studies, and the Philosophy of Mind. As a matter of the Bhaktivedanta Institute, member of the Bhaktivedanta Institute for Higher Studies, BIHS, since 2015, he develops courses on theology and science, including Vedic concepts of cosmography, consciousness, and physics. He has presented at universities and international conferences. So now uh, I welcome uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Mauricio uh, Garrido uh, to uh, present the first seminar on uh, Bhagavad Vedic Cosmology. And I also welcome uh, in our participants, uh, we are very fortunate that we have uh, uh, Mr. Bob Cohen, uh, with us, who is the executive director of Bhaktivedanta Institute for Higher Studies, Florida. So we also heartily welcome him for uh, uh, gracing the uh, first lecture on this Vedic cosmology. Okay, so now, uh, Dr. Mauricio Garrido, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, uh, Praveen. Um, thank you all for, for coming and for giving me this opportunity to speak on this uh, very interesting but also mystifying um, uh, topic. And uh, uh, I would like to now share my screen with you. Let me know if, uh, if you're able to, to see it. Is, it. is it showing? Yeah, it's visible now. Okay, very good. So, all right, very good. So the, um, this, um, as uh, Praveen was uh, saying, you know, this is a three session uh, seminar. And uh, in this first session, I'll be defining the Vedic universe according to the Bhagavatam. In this, uh, in this first one, uh, there, there will be uh, very interesting first things, but uh, there will be uh, a lot of questions. And uh, I would like you to be uh, okay at the end of this if, uh, 
if, if by the end of this, you, you, you think of, uh, to yourself, what is all this about? That is good. Don't, don't, uh, don't despair if, if, uh, if, if uh, none of this makes sense at, towards the end, because there's going to be two other sessions where we're actually going to get into it and trying to explain uh, what it is that the Bhagavatam is saying. But we first want to see is what, what is it that these Puranic literatures are telling us by themselves? And then what is it that, uh, or how is it that we have been looking at it in different ways to try to uh, understand its mysteries? So uh, in this first session, we will start, we will begin by uh, first looking at questions in modern cosmology. What is modern cosmology right now asking itself? And then we're going to be looking at parallels with the Vedic universe. Uh, after this, we, we will have, uh, you know, an entrance into actually defining what, uh, what is the, what is Bumandala. The idea uh, behind, behind this is that uh, we, we can, we can uh, see the, the, the Vedic universe in a, in a broad picture and then start closing in towards, uh, towards this, um, structure that is called Bhumandala, and which is the focus of the fifth canto of the Bhagavatam. So let us start with the questions in modern cosmology. We have been looking at the universe for ages and ages, and we have, th there is this awe and wonder that, that uh, what is there out there? What, what are all these structures? What, are, what, what, what is all this beauty that, that we see? And uh, for, for, for a long time, we have been uh, asking ourselves what, one of the questions, how old is uni the universe? Uh, through, uh, through spectroscopy and uh, specifically through the redshift of the, of the spectra of the stars, we have been able to, uh, to determine that uh, the age of the universe um, should be about 13.8 billion years uh, since the Big Bang. Right. And another question is, well, what is the universe made of? And looking at, at the spectroscopy again of the of the stars and uh, of the of the interstellar clouds and all that, we have been able to determine that the uh, abundance of elements in the universe is mostly hydrogen, 73.9 percent and uh, helium uh, at 24 percent. And then there's. Um, all the other uh, elements, but it's mostly hydrogen and helium. Uh, another question that, that we've been asking ourselves is, are we alone? And uh, the current estimate is that at least in the Milky Way, there are 6 billion uh, Earth-like planets, of which uh, 4,000 of these, have, uh, of these uh, exoplanets have been confirmed, and 24 uh, superhabitable planets have been identified. Uh, how, is, how do we know that it's uh, habitable, habitable or, in, in, or inhabitable? Well, we look at, uh, among other things, uh, things like um, is, the, is, the, uh, is the planet rocky, icy, uh, is it uh, is it within the habitable zone, which is you know a certain distance from the from the sun, where it's not too cold or it's not too hot, things like that. And in our current view of the universe, we see the Earth as this uh, very small planet, which is within the solar system, which is within the solar interstellar neighborhood, within the Milky Way, within the local galactic group, which is within the local, the Virgo supercluster, which is within the local superclusters, which is within the observable universe. This observable universe is humongous, as you can see, uh, spanning uh, light years and light years. And uh, as far as we know, we are the only uh, uh, creatures within this universe that are intelligent enough to ask the questions of, you know, why are we here? That's as far as we know. Uh, but there are also unsolved mysteries. Uh, even though we have been able to determine, you know, what the composition of the elements are. If you notice in here, that's about 4% of 
really all that all the content of the universe. Uh, then, th then there is uh, dark matter, which composes 22%. And we don't really know what it is. Uh, we have guesses as to what, might, what it might be. Like uh, we, we, we have been talking about um, particles that could be like uh, whims or machos and uh, all of these uh, weakly interacting massive particles and, and uh, et cetera. But we don't, we, we, we haven't really uh, been able to, to answer what is dark matter. And then there is this other thing that is called dark energy of which we have even less of an idea what it is. Uh, this, this dark energy is, uh, is making our universe expand and it's making it expand at in an accelerating rate as, as far as we know at this moment. So, but, but we don't know uh, what kind of energy it really is because it is different from any other type of energy that, that we know of. Then there is the, you know, the big question of, you know, what is the fate of the universe? You know, we, we, uh, we believe that things started with a big bang and that, but is, is the universe going to continue uh, expanding uh, infinitely and becoming cold or is it going to expand so fast that it's going to rip apart the, the, the um, fabric of space and time? Or is there going to be a maximum expansion and then going to uh, start contracting up to a big crunch? We don't know that yet at this moment, which, which one is going to be. Then there is another big question, which is, was there something before the Big Bang? And there are theories out there which say that, you know, maybe there was, uh, there is this uh, oscillating universe where the, a Big Bang is followed by a big, big crunch, which is followed by another Big Bang, which is, uh, and continuously like that, um, ad infinitum. But we don't, we, we don't know for sure, you know, if, if, uh, if there was something or not before the Big Bang. Uh, a big question then also is, are there parallel universes out there? There, there is currently like many different uh, classifications of the types of multi-universe that, that could be out there. Um, you know, the, the, this one here, you know, is, is just one classification by, by one professor at MIT uh, that, that is looking at, uh, for example, the, the uh, string theory universes, which is different from the many world universes, uh, or which is different from the from the cosmic inflation uh, uh, universes that that that, that uh, create the, the the bubble universes. So th there are so many th there are so many different classifications that uh, we but we but we don't know if there are parallel universes out there or not. But we we have ideas of uh, if there are you know. What 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 uh, what could there be? And even though we have not been able to to detect uh, intelligent life in other planets, there are talks about uh, intelligent life out there. Uh, this was uh, if you if you notice here, th th this is uh, uh, an article by CNN, which is uh, a reputable uh, news source, uh, and it's dated January ten. 2021, it's, you know, last month, where it's talking about uh, the US intelligence, uh, basically the Pentagon, you know, creating a, creating a, a task force to, uh, to talk about, to investigate uh, these things called uh, UFOs, where unidentified flying objects, because they have seen uh, aircraft that is not, um, is, is, is not, it's not really, uh, does not have the, the, the capabilities that, that others, that, that other one, um, normal ones that, that, that we have uh, actually have. And so we, so we are asking ourselves, you know, do we, do we actually know what there is out there? So I'm going to give right now a couple of parallels with the Vedic universe, given, given these questions. And I don't want to, uh, uh, make you believe that just because the Bhagavatam is saying this, then it is a proof of the uh, certain certain things that that we just saw. Because uh, for for science, 
that is not the case. We, 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 for proof to be there, you have to do, follow the scientific method, which is, you know, you, you would have to have a model, uh, no, a mathematical model, which is describing all of these things that could make predictions that could later be uh, observed. So what I'm, what I'm gonna show you right now is just um, interesting parallels that will allow you to at least get some, uh, at least tickle your brain and make you ask, what is, what, what is there in these scriptures that, that uh, where, where they have been able to, to, to imagine all of these things? And is there something else what, 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 what is it in, in this? Because we're going to go into a, a lot of descriptions later on that are going to be extremely fantastic. We're going to ask, you know, is there, is there anything within this that makes sense? Is there anything that, that touches with reality? So I want to show you that, yes, even though uh, the Vedic scriptures are very fantastic, they, they, there is something behind them that, that makes us question what... Uh, what is the reality behind this? So let us start with the big picture. Uh, the, the Vedic script, uh, scriptures, specifically the Bhagavatam, talks about you know, there being a spiritual world and a material world. And both of these worlds uh, are, are um, sustained within the Brahma Jyoti or the, Bra the Brahman fall just coming from Krishna. Uh, there are innumerable universes within the, the spiritual realm, and there are innumerable universes from the, from the um, material world. And it is said that, that, that uh, Krishna is the source of all of these. Uh, Krishna, Krishna's to Bhagavan Svayam. He is the source of, uh, uh, of everything. And uh, we can see here that in the specifically within the material world that one expansion of, of Krishna, which is Mahavishnu, uh, is lying in this Karana ocean, the, the causal ocean. And from him, innumerable universes are coming from the pores of his body and uh, expanding and coming back into it. Uh, as he breathes out, uh, the universes come out and at the, as he breathes in, uh, they, they come in. So already we are seeing that the Vedic universe talks about multiple universes. They, they are not created in the same way that, that, that uh, you, you saw the previous ones, uh, but they, there is this idea of multiple universes. And these universe, as I mentioned, they expand. When they come out of, uh, of uh, Mahavishnu, they start expanding pretty much the, the way that the they, that uh, the um, uh, we, we we believe that that, that the universe is, is expanding right now. Um, I don't know um, if uh, is is the sound clear to everyone. I'm seeing some some things here where they're asking. Okay, no, no, very good. Yeah, uh, good. So let's see. The universes have uh, different sizes and are habitable. So this is this uh, just like the, the different types of mul of multiverse that that that, that the um, scientists have nowadays. There are different sizes to these universes, but unlike uh, the, these um, uh, these other ones that where where uh, most of them are math are non habitable. Most most of these are uh, mathematically possible, but the conditions for for um, uh, existence are are not are not there. In the Vedic universe, all of these universes that are coming out from Mahavishnu are habitable. They and they all have a finite lifetime. So we were asking, you know, is it going to expand infinitely? Is it going to be to come to a big crunch? Well, the fact that they they're uh, that they will be coming back into, into the body of Mahavishnu so shows that they have a lot, uh, limited lifetime. And because of, of the cyclical breathing of Mahavishnu, we can say that the multiverse is cyclical. 
uh, just like most of other things that we find in, in, in the universe where, um, at least in, in, in close proximity to us, and is that everything is, it goes in cycles. Uh, there's also interesting things like the idea that the time or that, 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 uh, that law of cause and effect begins with each universe. It is said that Mahavishnu glances on these universes and injects that, that time or that entropy or that law of cause and effect. And so that starts right there at, uh, you know, with each universe. It is also said that in, in, um, in, philo in philosophy, that if you have uh, an infinite regression, you, know, you have not really been able to explain uh, the cause of something. So, you know, we may ask, well, what, what was the, how, what was, what, what created the universe? And you may say, well, the big bang created the universe. Well, how did the big bang uh, come about? You know, what, 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 what created it? Well, it is due, uh, it, it is due to, to the multiverse, you could say. Okay. Well, and how, how did that multiverse come about? Well, because of the laws of physics. And how did those laws of physics come about? So you could go into an infinite regression and never really say, how did it begin, right? So this is a, a, a logical fault in a, in, in, a, in, in a philosophical argument. And if you, want to, if you want to break with that, you have to say, well, you know, it has to stop somewhere. There, there has to be a point where, where, you know, this is really the beginning, right? So if you, if you have anything within this material world, you know that uh, anything that, that, has, that, that has a beginning uh, has an end and something that and it didn't come about by itself. It can't it can just like come out of nowhere, right? So whatever it is that, that caused that first uh, instance, that, that, that first thing has to be categorically different from it. So it cannot, it has to be categorically different from matter. That, that source of that first thing, of, of that first matter that, 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 that was created has to be categorically different, has to be transcendental to matter. And uh, that we call God or Vishnu or uh, Allah or however you want to call him. And he is the cause of both the spiritual and the material worlds. Now, the... This previous uh, uh, idea that I just gave you is not the whole story. Uh, this is just like the, the very beginning, but the, the story goes much more involved. I won't get into it, but I, I'm just going to show you that uh, Mahavishnu uh, starts creating, uh, you know, with time and, and with these universes that come out of him, uh, which are made of, the, of this uh, substance called Pradhan. A uh, whole series of, of development of these uh, elements start happening. And uh, as I said, I'm not going to go into it, but I do want you to see in, uh, from this uh, picture that it includes not only matter, which is what uh, current science is looking into only, but also aspects of consciousness as well. As, as you, you know, as in here you see uh, some, something like... Uh, like the gross elements, we, we, uh, which are the earth, fire, water, air, and ether. And, um, but you also see things like material ego. You see things like the mind and uh, the, the knowledge acquiring sense. So th there's, there's, a lot, there's a lot going on in here. Right? Um, let's see. This, uh, this comes from the last one, you know, the, the, uh, from the material ego in, uh, in ignorance. Uh, you know, there, there's a further uh, expansion. And I'm just including this for, for, uh, uh, for completeness to, to show that, that there, there is m much more to this. Um, for, be, beyond that, uh, it is explained how these elements uh, got together. There is a whole story behind that again. Uh, and th this seminar, I'm, I'm trying to keep it towards the fifth canto and not go too much into other cantos. So that's why I'm, I, I'm not going too much into that. But um, this includes the, uh, at some point, the universe 
uh, having layers. Uh, these, the, the universe is said to be egg-like and made up of uh, sequential elements, each layer being 10 times bigger than the previous one. And the innermost are grosser than the outermost. So you start with earth, then uh, earth, water, fire, air, and ether. Then you have uh, the material ego, uh, mahatattva, and finally pradana. Now let us go exactly into what it is this Bhumandala. We, we have, I have just given you right now a big picture of, of the Bhagavatam cosmology, but uh, what is there within this universe? And that is the, the, the topic of the fifth canto. What is there within the universe? We have this, um, in, in, inside of it, this um, thing called Bhumandala, which is a disc, and it is dividing the, uh, the upper and the lower parts of, of, of the Brahmanda uh, into a heavenly region and a subterranean region. This subterranean region is filled <coughs> almost all the way up to Bhumandala in, um, in a certain liquid. And this Bhumandala uh, is, is uh, divided into concentric rings that are called uh, islands and oceans or dvipas. Uh, if you if you if you want to call it that, and uh, get going into a closer look in here, uh, these um, th these uh, islands and oceans go uh, sequential. There's an island which is surrounded by an ocean, which is surrounded by an island, which is surrounded by an ocean, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And in the center island, uh, th there is this big. Um, mountain that is called Mount Mare. We'll talk about it more in a, in a minute, but I, I just want to, to say that, that this is the, the structure. The, the innermost part of it is called Saptadvip. <coughs> Saptadvip meaning uh, the seven islands. These seven inner islands, uh, they, they go all the way up to the last one that is called Pushkaradvip. And this Pushkar Dvip has, has this uh, mountain that, goes, that, that divides the, the, uh, this, this island in two. And this is uh, the, called the Man Manasudara mountain. There are three regions that are beyond Sapta Dvip. Uh, one of them is called uh, Loka or inhabited. The second one is called Kanchani Bhumi or the golden land. And there's a third one that is called Aloka Varsha that goes all the way up to the end of, um, of the edge of, of, the, of, of, the, um, of the universe. Now, between the Aloka Varsha and the, and the Golden Land, the Kanchini Bhumi, there is this um, uh, ring mountain that is called Loka, Loka Loka Mountain. And is, it is said that, that the inner ridge the inner region here of the Saptadvip plus Loka plus Kanchini Bhumi, the, the golden land, it is, it, it is lit by, by the sun, while this uh, outer region of Aloka Varsha is, is um, complete darkness. Uh, the, uh, the, this, uh, this inner land here, uh, Kanchini Bhumi, um, is it, it's also said to be uh, uninhabited. Basically, the, the habited lands only, uh, as as far as as I, as, as I know, are the um, are, are are the the ones of Saptadvip. Here is a small little video that was created by uh, Sarabuta Prabhu, uh, Richard L. Thompson, uh, of Mount Mary, which is the, the this uh, mount, mountain at the at the center. Uh, Island, which is called Jambudweep, and it is a it's a very tall mountain. Uh, we, we'll speak about it uh, in 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 a, in a while. And this is the, the first ocean, the saltwater ocean, which is encircled by uh, Plakshadweep, and then another ocean. And as you can see, the the rings start becoming larger and larger as they as they uh, move out from the center. This uh, gray uh, 
this gray mountain around here. That is the uh, Loka Loka mountain. And this uh, yellow land here is the, the golden land, Kanchenibumi. So what are the features of this uh, Saptavip? Uh, these, these features are, uh, as I mentioned, island, ocean, island, ocean. And uh, what, we, what we see is that uh, the island and the ocean that surrounds it have the same thickness, while the surrounding island of that ocean has twice the, the, the thickness of, of, of the ocean and the island that, that, that are there, um, that, that it encircles. Now, um, by this moment, you may already start asking yourself, well, I've never seen anything like this in, in the world. You know, what, what, is the, what, what, is, what is this Bhagavatam talking about? You know, but uh, that is what session two and session three will, re will be really about. We're gonna understand uh, later on how, how this um, doubling of the, of, the, um, uh, of the thickness of the islands and all of that uh, correspond to uh, interesting features on earth. Uh, that that are that that can uh, that can be uh, seen as a planetosphere, but I don't I don't want to get ahead of myself. I just want to ask you to to please uh, bear with me as as I just explain what it is that it's that that the Bhagavatam is saying. Uh, later in session two and session three, we'll go into how can we understand this. You know, how does this match up with with what we actually see? Uh, as I mentioned, the, the last of the, of the um, islands in the Saptadvip, the inner ring, the inner rings, uh, is, uh, is called Pushkaradvip, and uh, it has this mountain that is the Manasotara mountain. Uh, it's surrounding the, the yogurt ocean, and this Manasotara mountain, uh, we will see links Bhumandala with the orbit of the sun. The way that in the Bhagavatam it is explained is that the chariot of the sun, you know, the, one, the, the wheel of, of the chariot, it goes along this Manasatra mountain, while the, uh, while the axle on the other end uh, is on, on uh, Mount Meru. And this chariot goes inside and outside uh, as the year progresses. This is more... Uh, uh, a scaled version so that you can see the, the, the real dimensions of, of how, you know, wh where the sun would be, um, how far away Mount Mary would be, etc. Now, what are the features of the outer rings? So beyond, uh, beyond Saptavit, we mentioned that there was Kanchenibhumi. This Kanchenibhumi doesn't follow anymore that, that doubling of, uh, you know, the island and the and, and the, um, followed followed by the ocean and then twice the thickness of that is the island and the ocean that surround it and twice um, this this uh, Kanchenibhumi it is said that that uh, has the thickness basically uh, that is the radius of the of the Manasutra mountain and the radius of uh, of Kanchenibhumi is half the radius of Bumadala. Now, there is descriptions of this Saptavip, the, the, this, um, the, this um, uh, seven islands. Uh, each island has a, has a specific name, Jambu, uh, where it is the, which is the center island, and where it is said that th this is where we are, uh, Jambudvip. Uh, it means the rose, it is named after the rose apple tree. And um, there's also Plakshadvip, Shamalivip, Kushadvip, Kranchadvip, Shakadvip, and Pushkardvip. And they're each named after uh, different things like the Indian fig tree, the silk cotton tree, Kusha grass, Mount Krancha, et cetera. They, they, it is also explained uh, which deity is, is um, uh, worshipped in that, in that place. And uh, over here to the right, we also see the, what the surrounding oceans are. It said that Jambudvip, 
where we are at, um, it, is, uh, it is surrounded by salt water. While, and, and you know, we, we can, we, we can see why, you know, why, why you would say that. But Plakshadweep, it is said to be surrounded by uh, an ocean of sugarcane juice. Shamalivip is by uh, surrounded by an ocean of liquor, and uh, you know there are also uh, oceans of ghee, milk, etc. And each one of these varshas uh, is ruled by a grandson of Maharaj Priyabrata. There, there's also something very unique to to each one of these uh, islands or dvipas. And uh, for example, the, the Plakshadweep, which is the one that goes right after uh, Jankadweep, which is the center one, uh, it is said to have a fire with seven flames at the root of the Plaksha tree. Uh, it is said that Garuda, the bird carrier of, of uh, Lord Vishnu, he lives there in one of, in the Shamali tree. So uh, what we're gonna see later on is that Bumangala, even though it is being explained in all of these uh, mystical uh, uh, ways, uh, you know, you could all even say like mythical uh, or fantastical ways, it actually encodes a combination of astronomical and geographical maps. It is explained that that, that, uh, that this uh, this Bumandala, the, 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 uh, the, this Earth disk. Uh, composed of these rings is like a lotus. Why is that? If you if you look at a lotus, it has this pericarp right in the middle, and that pericarp you will notice that looks very much like the uh, Mount Meru that is on Jambudvip, the center island. Uh, it is said that Jambudvip uh, has a diameter of one hundred thousand yojanas, and just to give you a uh, uh, an idea of what you know what what that means. The Earth diameter, the diameter of the Earth, if you put it in terms of yojanas, would be one thousand yojanas, and Jambudvip is one hundred thousand yojanas. So already you can see that it's not we're not talking about your usual uh, description of Earth. Obviously, this is not this is very unusual, but. What, what, what they are referring to here is not just a simplistic view of the earth. It's something totally different because we're already with the, with the sizes, we're, we're talking about something different. Besides that, uh, we, uh, the, the different scholars, you know, from Jyotish and Western uh, 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 scholars, they have uh, seen Mount Meru as maybe the Earth's polar axis, or maybe the Pamir Mountains. It is said that on top of Jambudweep, there is the city of Brahma. And on the city of Brahma, the celestial Ganges falls down on it and uh, divides into four, in, into four, in, into the four directions. Uh, around this uh, city of Brahma, Brahmapuri, onto which, th that is on top of, of the, of Mount Meru. There are also other cities on, on top of Mount Meru, uh, cities of uh, the Lokapalas, the, the, the guardians of the, of the directions. And uh, for example, we see here Indra, Agni, Yama. So you have, you, uh, you have these demigods which have uh, a, a residence there. As I mentioned before, the, the uh, th there is this celestial Ganges. We, we see we see the the Ganges coming from the Himalayas, uh, but but this is only part of its journey. It is said that in in the Bhagavatam that the um, that the Ganges was actually created by Lord Vamanadev, <clears throat> uh, who pierced the, the the covering of the universe uh, at the top with his toe, and the water from the coastal ocean with on which uh, Lord Mahavishnu is lying, started seeping in through this one universe and started going down and washing and purifying all the upper worlds, uh, going down all the way up to Earth. And when it comes down to Earth, it comes in first into Brahmapuri on top of Mount Meru 
and the southern branch uh, into which it divides uh, is called the Alakananda River. And that is, comes to us as the, as the Ganges. That is what we see. Here's just uh, um, a little animation again by, by Richard L. Thompson, <clears throat> uh, as you can see here, that is the Brahmapuri and the other, uh, and the other are the, the, the other cities of the, of the other demigods. That is one of the big trees that <clears throat> are near the, the, the base of Mount Meru. <clears throat> and the Bhagavatam gives descriptions of how, you know, of the dimensions of, of Jambudweep. It, it's, it's a series of, of, um, of dimensions uh, where, where it talks about, well, you know, th there is uh, so many thousands of Yogenes here, so many thousands of Yogenes there. Here's just a, a sim uh, simplified map so that, uh, so that you can see uh, what are the different um, dimensions that, that they're talking about. But what I want to point your attention to is that, for example, this southern, uh, this, the southernmost um, um, <clears throat> Varsha or the, the, the country into which <clears throat> uh, Jambudweep is divided into is called Bharat Varsha. And this is the, the name I'll go all the way down to the Marinari Trench, right? That, that would be very, uh, you, you would say that, that would be a, a more significant um, the, uh, height. And maybe what, what happened is that, uh, you know, over the ages, the, 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 uh, the rise or, of, of the, or of the um, oceans made it, made it different. But the, the, the distance from the Marinara Trench, which is the lowest point on the, on the Pacific Ocean, all the way up to Mount Everest, just amounts to, um, you know, one to two yojanas. So again, uh, we're looking here at, at something different. And what the Bhagavatam is uh, pointing us to is that we have something here that is, is not anymore what our senses can perceive, that there is something more to it. Mount Meru, as, as you can see here, is... Uh, is 80, uh, 100, those 100 yogenes uh, big and 32,000 yogenes wide. There is uh, 16,000 of these uh, of, of these yogenes are below the earth and only 84,000 are above earth. Uh, just to give you an, an idea, the International Space Station is located at 400 kilometers above the earth. And, you know, if, if you take 150 uh, kilometers above the, above the sea level, uh, which is the, the end of the ionosphere, that's only 44.2 yojanas. So this Mount Meru is something even big, you know, that is even taller than, than, uh, than the International Space Station. In fact, from the distance from, from, the, uh, from the Earth to the moon in yojanas, you know, the altitude in Yojanas is only 30,000. That means that the Mount Meru is almost three times the distance from the earth to the moon. We are seeing, we're, we're being uh, given a view of, of a world that is beyond our senses, but we will connect it later on to something that, that, that actually makes sense. Because if we just say that it's all beyond our senses, then um, it, won't, it won't really make sense. No pun intended. Uh, here we have um, uh, also a description of each one of these varshas or countries into which the center island, Jambudweep, is divided into. As I mentioned before, this uh, lower one is uh, Bharat Varsha. Uh, where, where we're located. Uh, and uh, then there's also uh, Kimpurusha, Haribarsha, Ketumala, and all, all of these. The, it is said that each one of these uh, has a specific worshiper in it, and there is an avatar that is 
uh, that, that is uh, predominating in, in each one of these. It is also uh, important to mention here that the Bhagavatam mentions that there's of all these of all these places that 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 are here, only Bharatvarsha is a, the region inhabited by humans. The other regions are regions that are inhabited by inhabitants uh, that live for ten thousand years, whose bodies are like thunderbolts. They have the strength of ten thousand ele elephants, and they have sex until one year of life uh, remains, and then they have pregnancy. These other Varshas are heavenly regions that you have to qualify yourself in order to take birth into and to access. So it is not like we can just move into them, uh, you know, because, oh, they, this, this sounds like a very nice place. For example, near, near Mount Meru, there are the Nandanandana gardens where, where the demigods are said to, to have their, their pastimes. Uh, so obviously, you know, if you don't have the uh, the qualifications, if you don't have the pious credits, you won't be able to uh, access that that place. And uh, yeah, that's uh, I'm just going to leave it at that. Well, one 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 thing is that after the the demigods finish their 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 uh, period of of enjoyment. In the in the heavenly worlds, when their pious credits run out, then they uh, the last little amount of pious credits they uh, they enjoy it here in in this um, in, in this earthly heaven. Uh, there's the heaven. Uh, th there's there's the Divya Svarga, which is the the um, the heavens where where the demigods live. Here is this is the earthly heaven where. They, they will they will come uh, with the last pious credits, and then they will uh, they, they will take birth uh, once again in this Bharat Varsha as a human. As I mentioned, the uh, the Upadevas uh, they enjoy the four lakes around Mount Sumeru, Mount Meru, Mount Sumeru. It's, uh, they, they use those names interchangeably. Uh, the best of the demigods with their wives enjoying the gardens near the lakes. Well, their glories are sunk by the Gandharvas. There is a mango juice river that makes the wives of the Yakshas fragrant by drinking it. And there's a section of elaborate Varsha that is meant only for females. Uh, again, th these are uh, places where humans are not allowed to enter and won't be able to enter. The river that is, uh, comes from the broken jungle fruits generates gold uh, and it's enjoyed by, by great demigods and their wives. The river has its benefits. Uh, it has things like uh, you won't get wrinkles or gray hair. Uh, there won't ever be any uh, uh, fatigue for you. Uh, there is a perspiration that is fragrant, not afflicted by old age, disease, or untimely death. And in other words, this is a place where uh, you really enjoy uh, most of the times when we when we go on a, on a vacation, uh, you know we we don't enjoy that much. Sometimes the weather is horrible. Sometimes uh, you know we get sunburned. Uh, sometimes it's but in here everything is is perfect. It is meant for enjoyment. But what about Bharat Varsha? Is are there any descriptions in the Bhagavatam of Bharat Varsha? Yes. It says that you take birth here according to your karma. So great personalities are in the mode of goodness. Uh, ordin ordinary humans are in the mode of passion. And there are people that are extremely abominable that are in the mode of ignorance. There are unique spiritual opportunities in Bharat Varsha that are not available in the heavenly regions. And therefore, even though the demigods are enjoying so much, they actually aspire for birth here on Bharat Varsha. We should also explain that there is a parallel uh, and even heavenly aspect to, to this, to this Bharat Varsha. But then there are the lower systems. These lower systems uh, are like chasms or openings in the earth. Uh, there's, uh, at least that's, that's what some of, some of the scholars uh, in, the, in Jyotish and, and Western uh, and Western uh, scholars say about these lower systems. Uh, again, it, they have to be in a, in a different realm, actually, because uh, otherwise it, uh, the, ge the geograph 
first, we would have already detected them with with uh, uh, with the with the sound waves that that go through the Earth. So so, so these lower chasms, uh, lower systems, they they have to be in a different realm, and in fact they are. Uh, these these uh, lower systems are not hell, by the way. They are called the Villa Svarga or the subterranean heavens. These are actually more opulent than the Divya Svarga, than, than the heavens where the demigods live. Uh, and it, this is so because they are extremely materialistic, the, the people that live in, in these subterranean heavens. Uh, it is said that, that the demons, uh, the, the um, Daityas and Danavas and, uh, and the snakes, you know, they, they, they live in, in these places. Uh, and they're more materialistic. And because of that, uh, it's more opulent. This Bilas Varga can be reached by entering holes in the earth, uh, special gateways, you can, you can say. Not, not just any hole, but special holes. Uh, and in many cultures, example, in the Mahabharata, uh, it, it is talked about. Also, there are, there are uh, name, there, there's mentions of that in Chinese uh, stories and also in Hawaii. The, 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 the Hawaiians talk about how there are, the, there are people who go into uh, some of these uh, volcanoes that they have and they enter into a different uh, realm when they do. Why do we say that, that there are different realms? Well, because we, you also uh, have this uh, effect of time dilation, which, is, which has been recorded in the, in, in, um, the Mahabharata in, in, in uh, stories from China. The lowest one of these, of these heavenly worlds is called Patala. And there it is said that there are shape-shifting Nagas with jewels on their heads. But then below that, there is Naraka or the actual hell, which is the place of suffering. And it's ruled by, and it's ruled by Yamaraj, uh, who is the superintendent of death. And justice is imparted there. An important thing for, for those of you who are not from India, is the is the uh, is the fact that this hell, this naraka, is not eternal, like in uh, Christian or uh, Muslim or Jewish uh, understanding, where you know once you go to hell, you're there forever. Here in the Bhagavatam, it is said that uh, you go there to suffer for some of the things that you did, and then uh, when your when your time is over, you take birth again, you know, within the lower species. And you start coming back up to, to a human being. There's also this other place that is called Petri Loka. And this is a heavenly region where the forefathers uh, are located. Uh, these, um, this Petri Loka could be said to be uh, where it's, it's possible that that is where the, the Christian out of body experiences. Are, are seen where, where they talk about like, oh, I saw my father, I saw my grandfather, you know, when, 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 I, uh, when I was in, in a coma and uh, he was telling me, you know, to go back or something like that. So, you know, it is possible that, that, they, are, that they, they have a, an encounter with, with the Petrus, with the forefathers who are in Petri Loka. And the, lo the lowest world just before the 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 ocean that is uh, that, that that is filling the lower half of of the universe is the world of uh, Anantashesha. This uh, multi-headed cobra-like servant incarnation of the Lord Vishnu, and is in charge of the false ego and the uh, mode of ignorance, Tamagun. Uh, this uh, uh, this Anantashesha. This incarnation of Lord Vishnu this uh, destroys creation at the time of annihilation. At the end of the universe, uh, um, Anantashesha manifests the Rudras, eleven Rudras in anger. Uh, the Rudras are expansions of Lord Shiva, and uh, it is said that Lord Shiva's object of meditation. When you see Lord Shiva meditating, uh, the Bhagavatam says that he is meditating on Lord Anantashesha. And uh, he, uh, Anantashesha, I said to support Bhumandala and lives beneath the seven planetary systems. 
So this is the end of this first session. And I've left, uh, you know, some time because I'm sure that many of you have many questions uh, to ask at, the, at this moment. And uh, I, I would like you to, uh, to, to, to please, you know, uh, ask those questions because um, uh, that, that, that's what will make this uh, a little bit more interactive than, than just free from, from you hearing me. Okay, so uh, now uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Mauricio. So we now the floor is open for questions and uh, comments, and uh, I would request participants to please write their questions in the chat window, and uh, then uh, I can read and uh, um, uh, Dr. Mauricio can answer. Okay, so the questions are pouring in. The first question is. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, okay, so what do we mean by parallel universe? I think uh, this is a, and also, okay, we get, uh, where is the region of black holes? So you can combine these two questions. <laughs> uh, is that, uh, is, is that asking for the, for, for the Western or the or, or the Puranic cosmology, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that is not uh, mentioned. So okay, so one uh, clear question is coming from Sant Gopeshwar Das. He's saying, "Hare Krishna, will the okay? Can you share pastimes in Mahabharata related to cracks in Earth leading to Bill Swarga?" Uh, yeah, yeah, in the in the Mahabharata. It is actually explained how Bhima, right, um, one of the one of the five uh, Pandava brothers, the uh, one of the elder brothers of uh, Arjuna, he he was poisoned uh, by Duryodhana, uh, his his cousin, because Duryodhana wanted to, uh, you know, just had had enough of, of this Bhima, uh, and then they tied him up and threw him. In the in the river, uh, when when he when he was going down into this river, it is said that that he sank and sank and sank, and uh, and he actually um, passed on to a different realm, and uh, where there were these nagas, there, there were these serpents, uh, and they were and, and they started biting him, right? And because of the their bite, because of their bites. Uh, he they this counteract, this counteracted the poison that he had gotten from from Duryodhana, and uh, at, at that time uh, when, when he when he regained consciousness, he freed himself from the from his uh, uh, from the ropes that were tying him, and just started beating up all the all, all the cobras that 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 were around him. At that point, the the king of the cobras, you know, he he uh, he said like, oh man, you know, this guy is. It's really strong and you know he's pounding us uh, we better you know ask forgiveness and so he came and uh, asked forgiveness and uh, as a way to uh, to, to uh, show their, their their repentance you know they, they invite him to to stay there and to um, and to have some uh, some, some, some of this special uh, liquid that, that they had um, I don't know if it was a special type of milk or something. Uh, and you know they, they were. It, this was all uh, in in this uh, underground region. L later, uh, he emerged back from it into into the into the um, uh, real world. Well, not the real world, but the the the, the earthly uh, realm that that we know of. Uh, and so this th this travel of him to the Naga world was done through this. Um, uh, through this river. I hope that that, that answers that, 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 that question. Okay, so another question is coming is, why can't we see Mount Meru? Ah, very good question. <laughs> that that we will address in, in, a, in a couple of days. Uh, but um, just to give you some, some idea of it, right? Uh, 
one of the things that that we've been uh, that, that we've been looking at is yeah, wh- what why 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 is it that that these heavenly places are not are not seen by us? You know, wh- why can't we perceive it? One of the things that we have to understand is that perception we don't uh, we don't really understand it completely at this moment uh, in its full um, uh, in its full scope. It is said that the yogis are able to to have mystical powers of seeing things that are beyond our perception, right? And this is done because their minds are uh, going to into sattva mode, in, into a mode of goodness. How how is it that the consciousness is able to perceive something uh, that is coming from the from the material senses? This is something that 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 the um, uh, yoga. Uh, that the yoga tradition talks about a little bit in, in very gross terms, not, not very much. And so it is, uh, uh, we have to start studying really what it is, uh, how it is that, that, that the soul through consciousness is able to perceive things because there are a lot of things that we are actually not aware of. There, uh, there, there are many things that, that, that our senses are picking up, but that, that, uh, and not just not, not just visual, but also in terms of hearing, in terms of taste, in, ter- in terms of touch, that we are not aware of. And um, understanding the science is something that, that that will require us to go beyond the the, the normal uh, things that that we see from from uh, regular modern biology and into the realm of the yogis. Right. So another question is, uh, uh, do all these planetary systems described exist in other universes as well? And also there is another question related to uh, that uh, these lokas which you have described, are they exist in some other dimensions? That's why we are not able to see them. Okay, very good question. So let me let me address the first one. Uh, we have very little information about the other universes. There is very, very little information about them. Uh, be, uh, what we know is that there are innumerable of them and that ours is uh, either the smallest one or one of the smallest ones. Uh, do the same planetary systems, uh, are, are, there, are, are they there in the, in the previous, in, in, in all the other ones? Um, it is not said, but what we do know is that the other places are inhabited. Why? Because uh, it would make no sense for Lord Vishnu to make something that is not going to be used. So the idea, the whole idea of the material world is that uh, the conditioned soul comes into it to uh, try to uh, experience uh, you know the 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 existence as in 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 which is separate from from God, trying to to forget God in some way, play, trying to play God Himself. So uh, the it, it is given that opportunity, and these other these other universes uh, give uh, just like this one give the opportunity for the conditioned soul to do that. Now uh, the second quote, so so they are all habitable. They, they, they have a sense of, you know, they have a purpose of being there, not, not just uh, not there. And the heavenly realms, um, are, are we not able to see it because they're in another dimension? Yes. Yes, they're in another dimension. Now, what is that dimension? Uh, as I explained earlier, you know, like we, th- there are many ways in which, you, in which you can understand dimension. Is it a spatial dimension or is it a dimension uh, that, that, that has to do with... Uh, the qualities of goodness, passion, and ignorance. Is it a dimension? Like, what? How are these dimensions different from ours? That is something that that, that we are actively researching at this moment at the Bhaktivedanta Institute for Higher Studies. Yes. Okay. okay. So the another question is: Does Vedic cosmology contradicts modern day science? It seems Vedic cosmology gives a broader reasoning, but we have to rely on scriptures only. Why more? why modern day science can't give this understanding to the world? 
I think that modern science can give uh, an understanding to the world eventually. Uh, right now, why, is it, why can't they do it? Because uh, they're limited uh, in their understanding of the universe as only matter. If you noticed um, when, when, I, when, I, when I was talking here, uh, let me pull up this. The, the Vedic universe includes uh, not only matter, but also aspects of consciousness. And it is only when you start, you know, putting these two together that, you know, the, the, to me, like a whole new universe opens up for you, right? If you only look at, at, the, at matter, you know, the, the, you're limiting uh, what, 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 you'll, what you'll discover. Okay. So is Bhumandala universe comparable with modern science universe? And do you able to create any kind of data models for this? If yes, can you show us or can we get those data models to run those simulations on computer? Uh, right now, uh, okay, let, let's see. The first, the first question, is it comparable with the, with the modern universe? Uh, yes, and that's what we're going to be seeing, that, that, that there, there is a connection between this uh, crazy universe that we just saw and the real, uh, not the real, but the, the perceivable universe that, that we, that, that we uh, see with, uh, with, with our senses. Um, are there any models uh, that, that, that we can do? Well, we're, we're beginning to develop, you know, these, these models right now. That, that is what the, where, where, the, uh, where the current state of, 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 uh, of uh, technology is right now for us at the Bakhtimanta Institute for Higher Studies. We're, we're trying to develop these models. Uh, and uh, eventually, hopefully, you know, uh, in, in the future, we'll be able to uh, do, do a lot with them. We'll be able to actually like show like, okay, here is here, you know, when you include consciousness and matter, this is what the universe looks like and uh, do it, you know, uh, in a rigorous way. Right now, uh, as you will see in the in upcoming sessions, we're, we're just making connections and, um, and we're trying to, to see like, well, what, what is this meant by here? How, how does this connect to the, to the real world? How, uh, how do we do this? Okay. So uh, another question is, uh, is it possible to travel to the higher dimensions, other realms, parallel universes? Uh, okay. So yes and, and no. <laughs> How's that for an answer? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes, we're, um, we're able to travel to other places, but we need qualifications. To, to these higher realms. You cannot just, uh, you know, if, if, you, if, um, if I want to go from here, from the United States to India, I cannot just take a plane and go to India because as soon as I, as I land, uh, the Indian government is gonna tell me, hey, uh, where's your visa? You know, you have no visa here? Sorry, but you gotta go back. And all that I saw was the airport. All I got to see was the airport when, when I came to, to India. I, I didn't get to see the Taj Mahal. I didn't get to see, you know, like, uh, you know, the, you know, beautiful uh, beaches of Goa. I didn't get to see uh, any, uh, you know, be beautiful temples like in Puri. Nothing. All I saw was, 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 this, uh, was, was this airport. Uh, so similarly, if we don't have the qualifications, we'll go to a place like the moon, for example. And uh, and we we'll, and we're, we're you know in the in the Vedic scriptures they, they talk about the moon being like this amazing place where people uh, you know where there's tons of vegetation and where, where people uh, are actually enjoying a lot. But then you know we, we go there you know with, with our spacecrafts and we only see dust. Well, what happened? Well, you only saw the the airport. Right. You only you, you, you never you never because you didn't have the qualification, you didn't have the pious credits to go there. If you obtain those those uh, pious credits, if you like, like the yogis do or like uh, people after performing many Vedic yagyas and living a very pious life at the end of their life, you know, they're able to go there or just as a yogi. Yes, you'll be able to go there. Now, can you go to to other universes? 
Well, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it is said that uh, Lord Brahma was surprised when he when he learned that there were other universes before uh, be, beyond his own, and that there were other Lord Brahmas with even more than four heads. He was surprised, so he was not even Lord Brahma was not aware of these other universes. And this is Lord Brahma, who is the uh, engineer of this universe, uh, you know, the, the secondary creator of this universe. And he is the one that, that has like all mystical powers. He, he is, uh, if he doesn't know uh, about these other universes, uh, it's going to be very tough for us to do it. Uh, the next question is, uh, it's a long uh, comment, but uh, let me read it. Uh, I sincerely uh, thank the speaker, the researcher, sir, and the institute for this session. I want to understand the following. First, how can we reconcile modern astronomy and Vedic astronomy in today's time? This is first question. So would you like to answer first, then I'll read the second one. Uh, well, that that, that that we'll be doing in second and third okay. session. Okay, right. <laughs> yeah, so, it's 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 uh, it's 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 not it's not easy. For, yeah. First of all, it's not easy, and it's going to take time for us to like look at different models. And it's we're we're not the first ones to ask those questions. By the way, you know, even people from the uh, even Jyotish scholars uh, from you know the Middle Ages, they were asking these questions as well. So it's it's something that has been going on. For a long time, what is what are the Puranas saying? Why why are they so different? The, these are these are um, and we're there are some models that we have right now to to help us understand it. So that 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 and we'll be looking at that in session two and three. Right, and the right. another another question is uh, there are differences between heliocentric and geocentric model, and considering that. What are the steps needed to establish Bhagavad cosmology into mainstream academic and research field? Well, one of the things that, uh, that, that you see is that in heliocentric and geocentric model, uh, there's just uh, a difference in, in uh, perspective. You know, if you, if, um, you can make a Mars-centered uh, universe. Or you can make a, a Jupiter-centered uh, universe. It's it's all a question of of uh, of what is your reference point. Or if you want to be a little bit more technical, uh, you can you can jump between these the, these points of view with Galilean transformations, which you learn in uh, first first year uh, of engineering in in physics class. Mm. So, you know, is it, is, it, is it heliocentric? Is it uh, geocentric? It doesn't matter. It's, it's just, w which is your, which is your, your, your reference point? That, that, that is what's important. And once you, when, once you establish what is your reference point, then you can do a, a transformation to other reference points very easily. Uh, what is needed to be able to, to establish, you know, the, the Bhagavatam as a, uh, you know, in the in modern uh, cosmology, it's going to take a lot at this moment because of of many factors. One is that at this moment we don't completely understand the Bhagavatam, uh, the, the the Puranic view of the universe. There's a lot that has been lost over time, and as I mentioned, even people from from the from from the Middle Ages, the Jyoti scholars, they 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 were already asking you know these questions because something had been lost over time. And, uh, and so we're, we're, we're trying to see like, okay, how, how, how do we reconcile these things? So first of all is that, do we understand our scriptures very well? Second, we have to ask ourselves, how much do we understand the data that is coming in through our experiments? Right now we have uh, models of the universe according to, to, the, uh, ac according to science. But these models are based upon, you know, looking at the data and thinking about what it could mean. Is, are, are these uh, assumptions always correct? Well, not always. And that's why science keeps progressing. It keeps making new models, keeps making new uh, assumptions like that. So 
uh, are, are, do we understand science enough? In, in other words, do we understand our data enough? And so being able to reconcile these two will, will require us to understand science well, and it will require us to understand the scriptures well. Right. And the another question is, uh, how can we uh, research deep with our limited resources into this uh, field to establish our model of cosmology? Uh, say that again. Basically, uh, the question is the entire structure and the model of cosmology is based on Srimad Bhagavatam. So it is very easy for other scholars, scientists and researchers to discard Bhagavad cosmology, stating it as mere fantasies. So how can we research deep with our limited resources into these uh, mysti mystical area of cosmology to you know, establish that the, our, the model of cosmology, Bhagavad model of cosmology is right? How, how should we present? How should we do the research? Well, uh, as I mentioned, uh, th th it's going to take two things. One is going to take for us to understand better what the... Uh, what, what the Bhagavatam says. This means that we're going to have to like understand Bhagavatam well. We're going to have to understand all the Puranas well because the Puran, all the Puranas, they, they have um, uh, the, 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 they, they have a similar uh, a similar view of, of, the, of the universe, right? Uh, we're going to have to also go into the, the different uh, in, into the different uh, realm uh, into the di different uh, philosophies like Sankhya, Yoga, uh, Vaisheshika, you know, Vedanta, we, we're going to have to go into, into them, into those, and understand how they view, because they, they, also, they, talk, they also talk about the, um, the, this model of the universe. So how is it that they are understanding it? You know, what, 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 what things can we get from them? Uh, because the, the Yoga... Uh, system they, they they talk about these mystical powers and they talk about the demigods and they talk about you know jambu leap they they talk about these things um sankhya philosophy you know they, they they talk about 14 uh 14 worlds in the gap so on try, trying to go beyond you know the piranhas into into the into the different uh, uh classical indian classical philosophies and Further than that, you know, like, can we get some more supplementary uh, understanding from other other um, uh, in, uh, Vedic literatures or supporting Vedic literatures? So that's that's one thing. Second, uh, we're, we we are going to have to uh, uh, start with, with that information. Start creating mathematical models, right? So very very much like like uh, what we have been uh, looking at. Uh, we we. In in uh, in um, modern physics, we want to be able to to go into 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 uh, the the models that they, that they have right now and say, well, you're explaining this, but there 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 are these limitations to your model. What if you include things like you know this and that? Uh, you know you you will you will be able to see the, uh, the, the, this and that, uh, that 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 we that we have calculated. So um, let's say, you know, you, we, we're talking about the age of the universe, right? The, here, this is just an example. We're talking about the age of the universe. Uh, and the Bhagavatam tells us that the, the day of Brahma is, uh, the day and night of Brahma is very, very close to what the, what, what the uh, age of the universe is according to, to uh, modern science. Well, can we say something about about that 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 goes further? Like, can we take one of the one of their models and tweak it, and to see like like what 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 if like for example this this uh, rebounding universe, the oscillating universe that we talked that we talked about, and see like okay in this oscillating universe, if we were to if we were to say that that the lifetime is the the the, the lifetime of of um, the lifetime of the universe is the day of Brahma. What are the consequences of saying that? What what and 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 can we see something in, in these models that that, that 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 was not predicted before? That that is just an example. Uh, 
but but um, we can we can do so much more. We we just have to get into it. We have to understand science very well, and we have to understand uh, the scriptures very well. Okay, so uh, wonderful. A uh, uh, lot of questions are still coming, so but I think. Uh, time is uh, we have to wind up now and uh, uh, jyotish prabhu can you please show the uh, presentation for our forthcoming seminars and uh, so uh, for the benefit of uh, participants so uh, this uh, demystifying vedic cosmology by uh, dr mauricio uh, today we have done the first seminar then second decoding the map of bhumandala 4th of february and vertical distance is size of universe and nature of stars on 21st february and then there will be a special lecture on art and science of meditation on 28th of february on uh, then another series we are having is science and religion conflict cooperation and coexistence by professor gopal gupta university of evansville usa and the topics are uh, 7th of march problem of scientific materialism and uh, 14th of march we'll have religious implications of big bang cosmology then uh, another wonderful uh, six session series uh, on uh, the practical theology and philosophy it's a special six session course on the teachings of bhagavad gita from 21st march to 28th april uh, you'll have to register for this course although it is free of cost but uh, strictly according to the registration salient features like scientific aspects of bhagavad gita five fundamental truths in bhagavad in gita sociological economic and management lessons from gita historical perspective and personal wellness and mental health tips from bhagavad gita so and uh, then finally uh, this i think the fifth one which is uh, not i think clearly visible uh, is the international science sustainability spirituality uh we call it 3s conference in the month of may i think it is uh, uh, 23rd and 24th of may there will be an international conference on science sustainability and spirituality so a lot of things are uh, are in uh, you know pipeline for um, all of you so those who have joined first time today please drop your email ids and phone numbers in the chat window so that we can contact you we can add you in the whatsapp group for communication or we can drop a mail or uh, some of you have said that you want to be a part of uh, institute for science and spirituality so please for uh, i request those uh, uh, people also to drop your phone numbers and uh, mail ids we will contact you and if poss possible also drop your affiliations if you are in, you are connected with some um, university or professor or a scientist or if if you you can do you can drop that also so and this is our whatsapp number uh, which is visible on the screen please send the message with your name your mobile number and your email id and uh, what what is your qualification what you do Uh, all those details in this uh, whatsapp number and we'll contact you thank you very much and uh, i sincerely thank uh, dr mauricio garrido for uh, sparing his uh, busy schedule for uh, giving this wonderful you know uh, uh, seminar on bhagavad cosmology such a difficult subject matter and uh, and today a uh, few participants from isro also came and uh, i was seeing their comments they were wonderfully uh, excited to know more so uh, uh, so that was great so i uh, again thank uh, dr mauricio garrido for uh, for the wonderful session uh, any any comment uh, from dr mauricio then otherwise we'll wind up no just uh, very thankful to to uh, be able to uh, share this with you and uh, you know I, i love your your questions um i hope that, um, that that you all come back here next week yes yes and uh, and whoever uh, the, we could not take uh, the questions from uh, some of the participants so don't worry we'll take your questions in the next session and uh, 
and if uh, not next then probably in the next next session but we'll cover all the questions don't worry hari krishna so we'll uh, stop our session here and uh, we'll wait for 2 3 minutes so whoever wants to drop their mail ids and phone numbers please drop in the chat window and uh, uh, we'll contact you hari krishna thank you all